In this video, we're talking all about shading. Shading is essential for making something look 3D in any kind of art. But even if you have no experience with art whatsoever, I'm going to show you how to add shading to your pixel art to give it some dimension. Let's do it. Okay, so here I am in a sprite and I have the outline of a 3D box drawn. Now this is drawn in a certain perspective that lets you see the front face, the top face and the side face of a cube. And our mind kind of puts this together instead of seeing a square and two rhombuses here, we could say, okay, yeah, that's a cube sitting on the floor. But where this can really start to look three dimensional is where we add some shading and shading is really easy to overcomplicate. All you're doing is thinking about where the light is coming from and darkening or lightening things based on the direction of light. So let's say the light is coming from this direction here. If it were perfect, be lighting mostly this front face and these other two faces that are faced away from the light are going to be darker. And so let's just take this color and we'll make a little bit darker shade. I'll just fill that in. So now we have this with front lighting. The light is strongest on the front face and it's about equal on the other two faces. Now, even though this might be accurate, this isn't really the most dynamic way to show lighting. I mean, it just, it doesn't look as good as it could. When you're thinking about a light direction, it's nice to, if you have three faces, to have them all be different shades. By the way, if you're just getting into pixel art, I don't want you to miss the pixel art fast track. This is a video course hosted by me, and we go over all the basics of making pixel art. And it's perfect if you've never done pixel art before. You don't even have to have done any kind of art before. We start at the basics, and by the end of the course, you'll be able to make some cool stuff. So here's a link to get that course absolutely free. Don't miss it, okay? So let's back up a minute. What if we take our light and it comes from the top? Well, that would kind of give us a similar result is it would be bright on the top and the two sides. If we take this light and we go from the top, but maybe just kind of slightly to the side like this, then if you think about it, the light's gonna be strongest on this face and it's going to be a little less strong on this face, but this face is still going to be brighter than this face. So we're going to have three different shades here, three different brightnesses. So this one might be white. This one will be maybe just a little darker. And then the front face will be darker than that. Let's just make this a little bit more extreme. And so now we have three different brightnesses, which really lets you feel the shape of this block. And that's what makes things look really good is changing that light angle to give it some dimension. Now, this is especially helpful if you're doing kind of isometric pixel art like this, where you can see three faces. If you're doing top-down pixel art, you don't have to worry so much about the light angle, but you do still need to come up with some kind of direction for the light. But it is helpful to think about the light direction. And a lot of the time with like top-down art, if we were to draw a cube, it might look like this. We would just see the front face and the back face. And in this case, we can have the light maybe coming in on the top, just make this a little bit more blue, and then having this front face shaded a little bit. This is just light coming in from the top like this, but we're not really going to know the difference if it's this angle or this angle from the cube itself. We could add a little shadow, so we could do something like this, add a little shadow on the ground for light that comes in just from the top, or if we have light that's coming in from the side, we can kind of hint at that with a shadow. So we could take this and just maybe do something like this. And at that point, we would have to show a little bit of dimension by drawing the shadow kind of on the side there. And it's kind of cool because you can show something in straight on perspective, but hint at its shape with the shadows, which is kind of neat. Now, a lot of the time, if you're going to make a sprite for a game or something, you might want to keep things a little bit more simple, but you do always have to think about where is the light coming from? So for instance, here's a 16 by 16 sprite of a chest with no shading at all. And it doesn't really read. That means like, it's hard to kind of tell what this is until you look at it for a second and you go, oh, okay. So this is maybe the front of the box. And then this is the top of the box. And then it has the kind of golden bands around here, like the treasure chests do probably need some other detail, like a lock and stuff too, but we can help this a lot just with shading. We can think about where the light is coming from. So if the light is coming from the top, then this top face of this cube is going to be brighter than this front face. And that's really how you shade things is you kind of break it down into a basic shape, like a cube or a sphere or a pyramid or whatever, whatever's kind of the closest shape. And then you can think about how the light would hit that geometric shape. 
And so let's just take this, I'm just gonna duplicate this layer so that we can see a before and after. Let's take this color and we'll make it a little bit darker and a little bit more kind of brown. I'll hit G just to fill this in. And so now we're already getting somewhere. You can kind of see that, okay, this is the top face and this is the side. It's starting to have a little bit of dimension. The other thing we can do to help this is not have this super dark black outline here on this little ridge. I could just maybe darker brown, something like this. And that's going to help that a lot maybe even a darker brown than that. Another thing that I like to do is instead of having a black outline all the way around is I like to add a little bit of shading to the outline as well. And so right here where we have our little edge highlight, we can take this and kind of make some brown around this like this. And then that just shades the outline and hints a little bit more at the 3D shape. We'll take this down just a little more. Yeah, something like that. Good. This is another trick that I picked up from a guy named Pixel Pete. If you want to see some crazy pixel art, this guy is an amazing artist and he has some basics tutorials. I've learned a lot from him as well as some pretty advanced, crazy tutorials. So make sure to check him out. But yeah, just from adding shading, now we have all this dimension here and that chest looks way better. I can add our little lock here. I can even do something like shade the edges of this little lock. Maybe I'll just use this same color like this. And that gives that a little bit of dimension too. And now we have a really nice chest and it's here, I'll add, I'll add this back in to make this fair. Here's without the shading, and here's with it. Just a really huge difference. In the next video, we're going to talk about how to pick the colors that you use for shading. Very, very important concept. Maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss it. You know what I'm saying? And hey, check out that pixel art fast track right here. That again is a free course that'll teach you the basics of pixel art. And it's available now totally free. I also got this video. Have a good one.